This is the Radtel RT490. It's advertised as a tri-band radio, which includes the 220 megahertz band for amateur radio in the USA. But you open up the paperwork and it has a fourth band included too in the manual. We're gonna look at that today and we're gonna put it on the tiny essay and see what we find. Thank you for joining the channel today. I picked this radio up on Amazon because one of you, and I don't remember who it was, someone in the comments of one of my last Fang videos said, in fact, it might have been in the comments of that video, that live stream I did with the Smoke and Ape and the Tiny SA. They said, you should do one on the Radtel RT490. I'd never heard of that radio. I've heard of Radtel. I hadn't, hadn't heard of this specific model. So I picked it up. It's $80 on Amazon at the time of this recording. And one of the comments says it's better than the UV5R. And I'm like, well, for $80, it certainly should be better than UV5R. We can see that right here, $79.99 at the time of this recording. You can see right there, it clearly said 245.325. Now it says 220 megahertz right. If you scroll down here, okay, here, here we go. It's, it's a, this is ambiguous. This is an in, ambiguous ad because the manual doesn't match what the ad says. Okay, because the ad says that there is a Bluetooth app for programming, and then it's a tri-band radio, and then it says tri-band radio 144 to 148 and 420 to 450. I'm going to guess that it transmits outside of those two amateur radio bands. We're going to test that here in a minute. On their own website, it says it's six bands. Now, it's not necessarily saying it's transmitting on six bands. AM receive for our aircraft band. Okay, so it has that. FM receive for broadcast radio. And uh, Bluetooth 2.4 gig ISM. I'm not exactly sure what that does. I think that just means it's Bluetooth because that's how the app connects to it. But I can't find the app, okay? It says it transmits on 136 to 180. That's different than what Amazon says. 200 to 260, we're going to test that. 350 to 400, worthless in the United States. And 400 to 520. It says six bands, but only transmits on four bands according to this right here. So that's different than what the Amazon ad says. So I wonder if the one on Amazon is locked down, and if you buy it directly from Radtel, you get a fully open model, or if they're just saying that on Amazon so that Amazon will allow them to sell it. Either way, I can't find the... Uh, I did a Google search, a Google Play Store search for the app. I can't find the app. I'm not too worried about it. I didn't really want to test the app today anyway. If I could find it easily, then I would um, I would grab it. It's There's nothing in the manual about the app. Let's just look at the radio, because that's really why we're here today. I didn't... I, I didn't even know it had Bluetooth programming, or at least I, if I did, I forgot about it. I didn't really care about that. And I was like, oh, if it's got an app real quick, I'll go grab that and see what that looks like. Welcome, channel mode. Okay, here's the overhead. So it comes with all this stuff here, a uh, desk charger, programming cable. That Radtel software we just looked at is where you download the actual desktop software. So that's there. Um, you can download that for free. It has this uh, stealth earpiece here, the radio, the battery, belt clip, slip on belt clip slips onto the battery it looks like and then the manual right there so it comes with all that so we see here okay main push p1 right here for main p2 changes between channel and frequency okay it's on it's on am 120.275 right there it's not allowing you to key up good it, it, sh it really shouldn't allow you to key up on that the okay button is the menu the home button is the, ba the home back button right there it takes you back out so that's good okay this button right here this button, the top button on the side, but the first button below the PTT turns on the FM broadcast receive. The next button down turns on the uh, the scanning. And then it's got this dust cover on the other side with the screw down that presumably has a Kenwood K-style connector behind it because that's what, that comes with that. Uh, no USB, oh yeah, there it is right there. Okay, USB-C charging right there on the battery. There we go, right there. Plug it in, charge USB-C. Good, 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 okay. Now, 467.325 is in the GMRS band in the United States, or, or thereabouts, roughly thereabouts. So it's transmitting there. Oh, it's in channel mode, okay. Frequency mode, force. I, that's an annoying sound. That means you're keying up. WRFK 311. I'm going to key up there. I don't know if 462.500 is, is an actual GMR. I don't think it is. I don't think that's an actual GMRS frequency anyway. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's see. What else? Okay, it's keying up on 220. KC5 HWB testing. There we go. Um, 2-2. Two, two. Actually, hold on. Okay, push up and down. It's, um, ooh. Frequency step. Oh, that's a step. Okay, I thought that was a narrow band. Okay. 12.5 kilohertz steps. 
memory channel, delete channel, receive CTSS, receive DCS, transmit CSS, uh, channel name, general manager, whatever that means. Transmit is transmit power is higher than low. Save is super mode or deep mode. All right. Roger beep is off. Yeah, we want the Roger beep off. Timeout timer set to 240 seconds. Vox is off. Wide narrow is set to wide. Voice is on and off. So you can turn the voice on and off. So a lot of times I get comments from Blind Ham saying, does this have voice prompt? This one does. You Hopefully you've heard it in the, in the um, beep. We can turn the beep off. There we go. Now the beep is off. That's annoying. I think that busy channel lockout is off. Uh, reverse. PF2 is radio transmit power. Okay, so you can change it. You can change the P1 and P2 buttons in the uh, in the menu here. Offset. Okay, that's the offset for 220. And offset direction is negative. Now let's see if that keys up. That might be the wrong frequency. That is annoying. I wonder how you turn that off. Power on message. S code DTMF code off. DPMF ST tone. PTT LT. Menu exit time, Vox delay, RPSTE. You can set it to display name or frequency for the top and bottom band. TDR is on transmit on both A and B. Bluetooth is off. Okay. KC5H should be testing. Um, maybe it's 540. There it is. That's the Louisville 220 repeater. KC5HWB testing. I hope that annoying tone's not coming through the repeater. There you go. 220 repeater, keys up works good so that's the menu it transmits on 220 it tr uh, transmits uh, outside of the uh, above the 450 megahertz band which I expected it to their website says it transmits outside and they they put that false information on Amazon so Amazon would allow them to sell it I guess all right let's put this on the tiny SA and see how dirty it is as we've done in the past we're going to set the tiny SA for 146.52 megahertz and that's what it's set right now for but I'll, I'll go through the steps just to show you guys I've already done this but if we go into measure and harmonic Okay, and we set it to 146.520 M for megahertz. And it asks you to do it again, megahertz. And then we go back into the main menu, and we go to level and EXT gain to negative 40 times 1. That gives us our measurement calculations that we're doing, and I'm going to key this thing up. Boy, that is annoying. There's got to be a way to turn that off in the software, but I don't know what they're calling it. I looked through the manual for PTT tone or um, transmit tone or something like that, and they're not calling it that. So I don't know what they're calling it. That's the problem. All right, so 146.52 is the one on the far left. That's the highest one as it should be. Okay, right here, number one. Okay, number two is 293.04, the same harmonic that we were seeing the Baofeng UV-17R. Uh, last time so you can see it's like almost zero it's like negative five which is terrible it should be d down below negative 40 and then the third harmonic is just just above negative 40 like negative 35 if all of the harmonics were around that range I, I would think that'd be okay I would think that'd be okay because that would be acceptable but that second harmonic is blasting you so that's dirty Dirty, dirty signal. Not as dirty as the Baofeng, though, because if you remember the Baofeng UV-17 that we tested a couple weeks ago, it was, uh, it was even, it had three harmonics that were closer to zero and instead of just two. So this one only has two, so maybe it is better than a UV-5R. I mean, that's, that's really kind of a thing. All right, so I'm going to set up this for, I want to see what it does on 220. Okay, I want to see what it does on 220, so I'm going to set it up for 220, and then I might set it up for like a GMRS frequency and see what it does for that. But the first thing I want to tell you is that this video is sponsored by Real Estate for Life. If you're planning on moving to a warmer state or just a family-friendly environment, contact realestateforlife.org. They have over 1,400 conscientious agents in both the U.S. and Canada, and they support Ham Radio 2.0. Obviously, they're supporting this channel. And they support veterans. Also, they are a one-stop shop. You can get principled vendors for financial planning. You can get new mortgages and financing. And you can get biblically-based healthcare. All kinds of different options. Shop realestateforlife.org. Link will be in the description below. Be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. We're going into measure... 223.500 is the national calling frequency for 
220 FM simplex. So we're just going to use that 223.500 megahertz. And then we'll go back in and make sure our level is still. No, so it reset that negative 40 times one there. Okay, now I'm going to go back over here. So we'll let that sit there for a minute. My goodness, I think it looks better on 220 than it does on two meters. And it's supposed to be a two meter radio. It's not even advertised on Am on Amazon. It's not advertised as a 220 radio. Look at that. Okay, 223.500 there, the bottom left, right there. It's showing a, a zero. No second harmonic at all. And the third harmonic is right at negative 40. Holy cow, this is a better uh, KC5 HWB testing. Although we're going in through a dummy load, guys. Okay, we're going in through a dummy load. This is a better 220 radio than it is a two meter radio. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was not expecting that. I expected it to blast all over the place on 220. So let's change it to 440. Actually, I want to change it to like, what's channel one on GMRS? Okay, channel one on GMRS is 462.5625. Okay, so those are narrowband frequencies. So we're going to go back here and we're going to go to measure harmonic 462.5625. This is not a GMRS radio and it's advertised as going to 420 to 450, but it obviously doesn't do that. Level, external gain, negative 40. Now we're at 462.5625 megahertz, channel one on GMRS, going into a dummy load. All right, so 462.5625, and it takes it, 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 it takes this a minute, it always does that. It's cleaner here than it is on two meters. It has no second and third harmonic. It's got a fourth harmonic that's at negative 30, so a little high, around 1.8 gigahertz. <laughs> Ouch. So it's transmitting at uh, at a negative 30 dB gain. At negative, I'm sorry, negative 30 dB at 1.8 megahertz right now. 1.8 gigahertz right now. Ouch. That's terrible. But you know what? It's, it's kind of low. It's negative 30. Okay. Doesn't have a second or third harmonic at all. Not showing up on this device anyway. Wow, okay. Okay, you know what? For the heck of it, I'm gonna do 440. 446.0. Let's just do 446.0 just because. Back, measure, harmonic, 446.0 megahertz. Megahertz, level, minus 40 times one. Wow, it is cleaner everywhere than it is on two meters. It's dirty on two meters. On 220, on 440, and on 462, it's clean. It's got an eighth harmonic up here at like, golly, 3.5 gigahertz. Ouch, okay. No second or third harmonic right there. The first harmonic's right where it should be. Obviously, that's at 446.0. That's where, that's where the strongest signal is, as it should be. Right there. Wow, that is, you know, that's a lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be. That is a whole lot cleaner than I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to see splatter everywhere on 220 because it's not advertised on Amazon as a 220 radio, although it is on their own website, okay? And it's advertised to do 350 to 400 there too. That's a band that's used overseas in Europe somewhere, I think. 350 to 400 megahertz in the USA is like, I think there's some commercial stuff in there, but I think most of it's military. Uh, there might be some older like wireless guitar transceiver kits that are around the 360 or 70 megahertz, I don't remember. Um, I, I looked that up one time because I'm like, why did why would anyone want that? Because in the United States, it's kind of worthless. As far as a voice frequency, it's kind of worthless. So, hey, man, what do you think about this rat tail? I mean, it's 80 bucks. And again, one of the reviewers on Amazon said this is a much better radio than the UV5R. And I'm like, well, it's three times the prices of a UV5R, so it should be. And it seems to be cleaner than UV5R, at, at least on 440. A UV5R won't do 220. The, the standard UV5R won't do 220. Now, this one's a little dirty on 146.52, but I mean, so is a UV5R. So, you know, so so is your Redivus radios and your most of your, probably most of your TYT radios. So put a comment below. Let me know if you, well, let me know if you were the one that recommended I get this radio in one of my last Fang videos. And let me know if you have this radio and what you think about it. 73, guys.